on World News Tonight. Boris backs out. The United Kingdom's race for premiership takes yet another turn, with candidates shuffling once more. Continuing crisis. Ukraine prepares to retake captured areas despite growing threats of power shutdowns by the Russian forces. Monumental leadership. China's President Xi Jinping secures an unprecedented third term, exceeding the influence of some of the nation's greatest past leaders. And Cirque du Soleil. Performers take to the stage with breathtaking moves on the balance of life and death. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight, reporting from Colombo. Here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News. We start off with the race for the Premiership in the United Kingdom. Despite supposedly securing enough support among Tory MPs, former Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced that he will not stand in the leadership contest, stating that this is simply not the right time. Former UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has pulled out of the contest to become the Conservative Party leader and the country's next Prime Minister. In a statement on Sunday, he said that he, former Finance Minister Rishi Sunak and Penny Mordaunt have not been able to come together in national interests, adding that you can't govern effectively unless you have a united party in Parliament. Are you running for the leadership, Mr Sunak? This news comes the same day Sunak officially entered the race in a contest that could be over by Monday if Mordaunt can't reach the required 100-vote threshold among conservative lawmakers. Even before his official declaration on Twitter, Sunak had well over the threshold at 129 votes. Mordaunt, who was once the Secretary of Defense, had 23 declared backers and told that reports she tried to strike a deal with Johnson were false. But Johnson's statement likely paves the way for Sunak, his arch-rival, to become the next prime minister, replacing Liz Truss, who was forced to resign after she launched an economic program that triggered turmoil on financial markets. We have an update on this story as well. Seven weeks after losing to Liz Truss in this year's first Tory leadership contest, Rishi Sunak has emerged victor and is set to be the next UK Prime Minister. This comes following Penny Morden's abrupt withdrawal from the leadership race, her public statement reading Sunak has her full support and that she is grateful to all who have backed her thus far. 1922 Committee Chairman Sir Graham Brady confirmed the new Tory leader Rishi Sunak will address MPs immediately. On winning, Sunak effectively became the first ever British Asian Prime Minister of the country, backers hailed the victory, stating it is a major moment for the South Asian community. The official ceremony for appointment has not yet been confirmed. However, it is expected to be carried out as soon as possible. Rishi Sunak is therefore elected as leader of the Conservative Party. Yeah. It's looking optimistic for Ukrainian military forces as troops continue to advance towards Russian-occupied areas in hopes of retaking the land. Meanwhile, Russia continues to evacuate and deport citizens from the targeted regions, all while power outages seem unavoidable in Ukraine. Russian officials said on Saturday that two people were killed and 12 wounded by Ukraine shelling in the town of Shebekino in the Belgorod region close to the border. The regional health minister said one of the dead was a 14-year-old boy. The town has now started building protective structures, according to the local governor, who posted images on social media. Meanwhile in the south, pro-Russian authorities in Kherson are continuing to urge residents to leave in the face of Kyiv's advancing counter-offensive. Observers expect fierce clashes to take place in and around the city as both sides battle for control. On the Ukrainian side, the Air Force said critical infrastructure across the country was pounded by Russian missiles on Saturday, with several regions reporting strikes on energy facilities and power outages. President Vladimir Zelensky said the attacks were on a very wide scale. In his nightly address, he called on citizens to cut down their use of electricity. The main target for the Russian terrorists is energy. Therefore, please consume electricity even more consciously than before. The stability of our state energy industry depends on each city and district of Ukraine. The general staff of the Ukraine Armed Forces said Russian forces have been pushed out of more settlements in the Kherson region. 
Ukrainian forces are targeting resupply routes across a major river, while inching closer to a full-scale assault on the key city. Chinese President Xi Jinping has been confirmed to an unprecedented third term in power, effectively sealing his place among leaders such as Mao Zedong. The confirmation came following the conclusion of the CPC Congress held through all of last week. The confirmation of Chinese President Xi Jinping to an unprecedented third term after the Communist Party's week-long Congress ended on the weekend shows how he has cemented his place as the country's most powerful ruler since Mao Zedong. And the country's top governing body, the Politburo Standing Committee, is stacked with loyalists to him, with no clear successor. We must be highly vigilant and always maintain a top level of clarity and prudence and continually push for strict and comprehensive party governance so that the century-old party will continue to flourish in its self-revolution and always be the strongest and most reliable backbone of the Chinese people. For example, Shanghai's Communist Party chief, Li Qiang, followed Xi onto the stage, which means he is likely to become China's premier when the incumbent retires in March. Li Qiang was the focus of public anger, which made it past China's censors over Shanghai's Covid lockdowns, but he has a long history with the president. The man he would replace, Li Keqiang, is seen as a moderate and also has been excluded from the wider Central Committee, one of several absences. There was also this unusual incident on Saturday, where President Xi's predecessor, Hu Jintao, was unexpectedly escorted off the stage. He appeared to resist as he was led away. Video of the incident was widely shared on Twitter, but could not be found on China's heavily censored social media platforms. State media coverage of the ceremony also did not include the scene, but later reported that he was feeling unwell. The new Politburo has no women in it. There was only one, and she retired. The youngest man is 60 years old. The committee memberships further confirm that Xi's grip on power is unharmed by the events of a rocky few years. From a sharp economic slowdown and frustration over his zero-Covid policy, to China's growing estrangement from the West, which has been worsened by Xi's support for Russia's Vladimir Putin. Far-right leader Giorgia Meloni was named the Italian Prime Minister, becoming the first woman to head a government in Italy. The new government was sworn in and several world leaders congratulated her on the appointment. A new era in Italian politics has opened up as Prime Minister Giorgio Meloni joined former PM Mario Draghi at the Palazzo Chigi in Rome for the traditional bell ringing ceremony. The event signifies a handover of power, in this case from a technocrat government to the most far-right coalition since the end of the Second World War. Maloney is also the first female Prime Minister in the 76-year-old history of the Italian Republic. European Union chiefs are wary of the far-right taking power, but say they're ready to cooperate with the new coalition government, while Maloney says she's ready to work with the bloc's leaders. On Saturday, the new coalition was sworn into power by Italian President Sergio Mattarella. Although Maloney's post-fascist Brothers of Italy party won the recent election, in order to govern, they need the support of former Premier Silvio Berlusconi's Forza Italia and the far-right league led by Matteo Silvini. Rising energy prices and living costs are leaving economies debilitated across Europe. Thousands gathered to protest what they believe is economical oppression at the hands of mishandled financial situations. Tens of thousands of protesters in Germany took to the streets in response to the energy crisis and a new government package that many call an unfair distribution of funds. To combat rising energy and living prices, Germany's parliament on Friday approved a $195 billion rescue package that covers a one-time monthly gas bill for households and small and medium-sized businesses, as well as a cap on electricity prices. Protesters here say the package is unfair. Frank Werneck is the president of the United Services Trade. He says the government should give more support for people with lower and average incomes. Adding that under the current plan, those with smaller incomes still carry a much higher burden. 
Driven by higher energy costs, German inflation in September hit its highest level in more than a quarter of a century. Protesters are also calling on the government to speed up the transition away from fossil fuels. Around 24,000 people across six cities joined the protest, according to Greenpeace. Police estimate 1,800 protesters gathered in Berlin. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back. Chanting crowds marched in the streets of Berlin, Washington DC and Los Angeles on a show of international support for demonstrators facing a violent government crackdown in Iran, sparked by the death of 22-year-old Masa Amini in custody of that country's morality police. Berlin's streets have been transformed into a sea of red, white and green. They've come for Masa Amini. On the 16th of September, the 22-year-old Iranian woman of Kurdish descent was killed in custody by her country's morality police. The next day, protests erupted at her funeral. They have yet to abate. It is important for European policymakers to understand that this is a truly historic moment. It's a revolutionary process, so we're not sure of how long it's going to take, but the direction is very clear. An estimated 80,000 people attended the rally in Berlin. They were joined by demonstrators around the world. In LA, hundreds of protesters waved Iranian flags, calling for regime change. In Stockholm, some activists carried the flag of the East Kurdistan Free Women's Society. Shouts of death to Khomeini resounded. Women love freedom! The Tokyo demonstrators called out, Woman, Life, Freedom, a slogan that has become emblematic of the movement. One that's echoed in the UK. Women, life, freedom. I want human rights for everybody in Iran. That is the absolute least that we deserve. It's sad that it's something that we have to fight for, that people are being killed for, but it's, it's what we deserve. Student strikes in Iran continue alongside daily demonstrations. On Saturday, shopkeepers and factory workers went on strike in solidarity. This is one of the most serious challenges that the Islamic Republic of Iran has faced in the more than 40 years since its founding. U.S. President Joe Biden's plans at student debt forgiveness has been put on hold by the appeals court. However, the temporary block does not stop citizens from applying to the program. U.S. President Joe Biden's student loan forgiveness plan was put on hold due to an emergency stay order from a federal appeals court late on Friday. The order prevents the Biden administration from discharging any student debt under the program until the 8th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals reviews an appeal from six Republican-led states. The lawsuit from the six states challenging the loan forgiveness program was dismissed by a U.S. district judge on Thursday for lacking the necessary legal standing to pursue the case. Nebraska, Missouri, Arkansas, Iowa, Kansas and South Carolina said Biden's plan skirted congressional authority, threatened state tax revenues and threatened profits from state entities that invest in or service loans. In response, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre said the temporary order doesn't stop Americans from applying for the program or stop the administration from reviewing and preparing applications. Biden's debt forgiveness plan axes up to $10,000 in student loans for borrowers making less than $125,000 a year or $250,000 for married couples. Lower-income college students who received Pell Grants will have up to $20,000 of their debt cancelled. The nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office expects the plan to cost roughly $400 billion. COVID vaccines, which were once given for no charge, will now be expected to have quadrupled the price in order to keep up with revenue losses from the decreased demands for the jabs. Pfizer expects to roughly quadruple the price of its COVID-19 vaccine to about $110 to $130 per dose after the United States government's current purchase program expires. That's according to Pfizer executive Angela Lucan, who said she expects the vaccine, which is currently provided for free to all by the government, will be made available at no cost to people who have private insurance or government paid insurance. Wall Street was expecting such price hikes due to weak demand for COVID-19 vaccines. 
which meant vaccine makers would need to boost prices to meet revenue forecasts for next year and beyond. Analysts said the new pricing range could spur revenues at Pfizer for years, with one analyst telling it could add around $2.5 billion to $3 billion in annual revenue for the shots. The U.S. government currently pays around $30 per dose to Pfizer and its German partner BioNTech. In 2023, the market is expected to move to private insurance after the U.S. public health emergency expires. It is not yet clear what kind of access people without health insurance will have to the vaccine. Pfizer said it expects the COVID-19 market to be about the size of the flu shot market on an annual basis for adults, but that the pediatric market would take longer to build based on shots given so far. Lucan said she does not expect purchasing of the vaccine to transfer to the private sector until the first quarter of 2023 at the earliest. We have some good news for you. Over the years, plastic waste has turned into a major environmental problem. But several firms are finding ways to turn the problematic items back into oil for fuel. This involves reversing the production process, giving hope to sustainable results. Waste plastic is cut into small pieces, and this reactor heats the plastic at very high temperatures of 400 to 500 degrees Celsius. This is called pyrolysis, where the usual production process of making plastics from fuel is reversed. The heated plastic is first turned into gas, which is then cooled and becomes heavy or light oil. Now, the petrochemical industry in South Korea is developing pyrolysis that instead of using heat, converts the recycled plastic waste chemically. SK Innovation started injecting pyrolytic oil as a raw material in some of its petrochemical processes last year. And Hyundai Oil Bank was the first refinery to acquire an international eco-friendly product certification. It is now preparing to enter the global market. But the potential for development in alternative ways to produce fuel seems endless. A company has emerged that produces oil not by pyrolysis, but by using ceramic catalysts and wavelength energy. When plastic wrapping from ramen is put into the device, oil is extracted and just the aluminum remains. Instead of applying heat, this process works like a microwave where the bonds between carbon molecules are broken. This is a non-combustion facility. The process itself creates wavelength energy that breaks the molecular structure of the plastic wrapping in an eco-friendly way. So there is no combustion in the process. The company is getting recognition and has already patented its technology in more than 20 countries with contracts for export finalized with the United Kingdom. With technology now able to turn trash back into useful resources, recycling has become less of a choice and even more of an imperative. Welcome back. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Max Verstappen fought back a calamitous pit stop to win the U.S. Grand Prix ahead of Mercedes Lewis Hamilton in Austin, as his Red Bull team took the Formula One Constructors title a day after the death of billionaire owner Dietrich Mateschitz. Thousands of climate protesters took to the streets of Brussels, calling for rapid action for governments two weeks before a UN climate conference in Egypt. Denmark's Hulda Rune upset Greek top speed Stefano Tsitsipas in the final of the Stockholm Open. The seventh seed fired 20 winners en route to a victory over the 2018 champion in one hour and 35 minutes. Already flooded towns across Australia's east were on high alert after a weekend of heavy rains, with authorities warning a wild weather system could persist until later this week and trigger renewed riverbank bursts. India wore festive look as historical buildings and temples were illuminated on the eve of Diwali, the Hindu festival of life. And that is all from us here at World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you've missed any of the stories tonight, you can watch the whole program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. Cirque du Soleil, or Circus of the Sun, has returned after a pandemic hiatus to South Korea. We leave you tonight with visuals of gravity-defying performers and daredevils playing with fire. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.